So multiplying fractions. You already know a bit about multiplication. For instance, 5 times 3 is 5 plus 5 plus 5. It's like you copy paste it 5 three times. 5 times 4 is like 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. It's like you copy pasted it four times. So what about five times a half? You would copy paste it half a time. Well, five times a half is the same as saying half of five. Let's say that again, half of five. So when we say that, we're saying that the times and the off are the same thing, half of five. Keep that in mind for the next video as well. It will become very handy. So let's have a look at a half of a quarter. So now we want a half, but now we want only a quarter of that. So let's split into four pieces and get rid of the rest that we don't want because we're only copy pasting it a quarter of that. So now we have a quarter of that. Well, it's hard to tell what it is. So we can cut all the other pieces and make them all the same size. Now we know what it is. It is one out of eight because we've colored one piece out of eight pieces. How do we get that? How do we get one over eight from all these numbers? Well, one times one is one and two times four is eight. Let's have a look at this. Three quarters times a half. So for three quarters, I want a half of each of them like this. What is that as a fraction? Well, we have to make the pieces all the same first. Now we can count them. So that is three pieces out of eight pieces. So three out of eight. Let's check if our method still works. Three times one is three, four times two is eight. So when we multiply fractions, all we have to do is multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. In other words, all you have to do when you multiply fraction is multiply the top numbers together and multiply the bottom numbers together. Now, let's have a look at a third time two fifths. Let's do our multiplication method and see if it works. So one times two is two and three times five is 15. Let's cut our third up into two fifths and see if we get the same answer. So there's a third. And I only want two fifths of that. So chop into five pieces and only keep two. And then make sure all the pieces are the same size. Now count. So now we have these two out of 15. So we are correct. So all we have to do to multiply fraction is multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. Let's have a look at this problem. Three quarters times two fifths. Let's use our method. So we multiply the top. 3 times 2 is 6, and multiply the bottom, 4 times 5 is 20, to get our answer. But we noticed something from previous lessons. They're both even numbers, so we can cancel them and come up with a simpler equivalent fraction. So 2 into 6 goes 3 times, and 2 into 20 goes 10 times. So recap, we divide both numbers by 2 to get a simpler fraction. Is there another way to do this that is much faster? Well, we could have cancelled any top number with a bottom number because what we've done here is divide the top and divide by the bottom by the same number. So we can do it before we work it out. So we look for a number at the top with a number at the bottom that has a common factor. Two and four have common factors. Two divided by two is one. Two divided by four is two. So now we multiply the three and the one together to get three, and we multiply the two and the five together to get 10. So canceling before we get to the answer is much faster because there's less working out. Let's check our answers. So we have three quarters and then we only want two fifths of it. So we cut each piece into five and keep two pieces each and then make the pieces together. And that is exactly what we saw before, six out of 20, but we don't want six out of 20. It's so messy. We want to neaten it up with equivalent fractions. So we can take away some of the lines to make it, to keep them all the same. And I'm going to move that little square over there to the bottom corner, like so. And now you can see that it's three over 10. 
let's try another question. So let's do it both methods. So the quick method, as we said, is look for a number at the top, like 7, and a number at the bottom, 14, that has a common factor. So 7 goes into 7 and 14 as well. So 7 into 7 goes 1 time, and 7 into 14 goes 2 times. So now the top numbers are left with 1 times 1 is 1, and 8 times 2 is 16. 1 over 16. 7 over 8 times 1 over 14. So let's see if we cancel first what happens. So we look for a number at the top and a number at the bottom. So we notice that the 7 and the 14 have 7 as a common factor. So we can cancel these. 7 divided by 7 is 1 and 7 divided by 14 is 2. So now we multiply the top. 1 times 1 is 1, 8 times 2 is 16. Pretty simple. Let's see what happens if we decided to go ahead and multiply the tops by the tops and the bottom by the bottom without simplifying. I'm going to do this in a different color to show you the difference. So 7 times 1 is 7 and then 8 times 14 it's super annoying to work out 112 and then when, once we get that we notice that well we have to simplify so 7 divided by 7 and 112 divided by 7. Now we get 7 divided by 7 is 1, 112 divided by 7 is 16. So we get to the same answer, but this way it's much longer and much more complicated. So simplify first whenever you can. It makes it easier because you don't have to deal with large numbers. Go this way. What about mixed numbers? How do we multiply fractions with mixed numbers in them? Well, we know from previous lesson that we can convert them into improper fractions. So 5 wholes is the same as 5 over 1. And we can go 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So 3 times 2 plus the 1 is 7 over 3. And then we can multiply across just like we did before. There's nothing on the top and bottom that we can simplify. So we just multiply the top. 5 times 7 is 35, and multiply the bottom. 1 times 3 is just 3. And then we can further go back to mixed numbers if we want to. And how many 3s fit into 35? 11, because 11 times 3 is 33. So that means remainder 2. 35 take away 33 is 2, so remainder 2. So our answer is 11 and 2 thirds. That's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like and turn on notifications so you can see all the coming up lessons. Bye! Whee!